Yo, what's going on, and welcome back to Dark Souls Remastered. We're outside of Sense Fortress right here. You can hear some people ringing the bell. I believe we are now online, so we might be able to be invaded. Still won't be doing any summoning, probably. But either way, it's time to clear Sense Fortress. Which is not a fun time, because there's a lot of traps and these mean snake people that you see up there. Oh, I missed. Unlucky. So I was trying to hit this guy with that trap, but that obviously did not happen. So we'll just fight him with our shield strats. And yeah, so Sen's Fortress and the Catacombs are the last two areas that I have very much recollection of how to do. So hopefully we can get through Sen's Fortress at least quickly. I don't think I'll be going to the Catacombs for a little while because there's no reason for this character to go there right now. We'll see how much of Sen's Fortress we actually do because it's a little bit complicated since I don't remember quite everything perfectly. Like I did it but I didn't exactly do everything and I had help with someone reminding me what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay bye. That guy didn't die though so he's just down there now. But yeah, we got these giant swinging axes. They essentially just knock you off if you get hit by them. And it just becomes a bad day. I don't know if we can throw a fireball that far. Okay, so that guy triggered the little switch that was right here and then got shot in the back by that trap, so that's convenient. Oh, <laughs> when something just got hit by an axe, I guess maybe that snake man that we knocked off found his way back up and then he got hit by an axe while crossing. Remember, this is why you look both ways before you cross the street. Oh, I got invaded. God damn it. Alrighty. Well, where's he going? What the fuck? Hi. Oh, it's a giant dad. Okay. Well, this should be fun. Well, good thing you aggro that guy. Mm. Looks like he wants to fight, so let's go. We got the best. We got the giant dad emote. Come on. You know what's up? Alright, let's go, punk. Ooh, this is going to be a very short fight because this man has a lot of HP. I do not do damage to this guy. Okay. <laughs> Alright, well... I mean, we put up a fight for this guy being a giant dad. I don't know. How how can he have such 
high stats and evade me. I'm level 35. You're telling me this guy is like level 47 at most? He had so much HP. Jesus. Well, I mean, we don't really need to be human. We'll just go grab our humanity and use that to become human again, since he forced us to drop it. So yeah, that's the fun of Dark Souls PvP. You start to make any progress in an area, and then you just get invaded by someone who's way stronger than you, and he destroys your soul. But I feel like we outplayed him because I got like four hits on him before he got any And he was he probably wasn't expecting me to block all three of his swings He only had enough stamina for three swings it looked like So he probably wasn't expecting me to block the first two and then guard break on the third one when he had no stamina left So I'm pretty sure I outplayed him in that sense I just don't have the damage because he's got a plus 15 weapon there, probably. And then he's also using that weird fire whip spell, which my shield could not block very well. I was still taking like 40% of the damage through my shield. I'll just throw this guy off again. Hopefully we can deal with this lightning man, because this guy is very annoying, but we dealt with it because we had a shield last time. Uh, what even hit me there? That was weird. So, we're back to where we got invaded, and we got our stuff back. So, let's try and kill this guy. Oh, oh! I thought he wasn't dead. I was like, oh crap, there's all my stamina down the drain to do something that kind of looked cool, but is probably just going to get me killed. All right, so where's that snake man that he aggroed? Are they all dead? What the? <laughs> Who killed these? Did they kill themselves? Maybe he ag or the giant dad? By the way, his name was Giant Dad 2.0. What's up with that? But I think he aggroed them all and they ran into the rocks while we were fighting and died. Anyways, let's talk to this guy. Maybe we need to raise voices a little bit so we can hear him a little bit better. He seemed a little bit quiet. <laughs> Try kicking. Excuse you. Oh, he just says the same stuff. But yeah, that's... That's Ziegmeier that I was talking about probably around the bell gargoyles. And he just says, mmm, 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 a whole bunch when you see him the first time. And he's always just stuck somewhere and he requires your assistance to get him past the area. Excuse me. 
Oh, that's a grab? That's just unfortunate. Bye now. So that guy's not dead. So he's probably gonna make the long walk to get up here. Unless he's just stuck. We'll deal with that in a minute. We can finally get... Is this a ring? Yeah, it's a ring. So I think this this will be better than our blue tear stone ring, which only works when we're low. This instead will just give us more stats. Yeah, a lot more physical defense. Maybe that's what he was doing. That's why he took so little damage. He just had like the ring of steel protection on. That giant dad. Because I was not doing damage. And I don't have like the worst weapon ever. I don't have a fantastic weapon, but... Get wrecked. And now we get the shuttle. Alright, now we gotta get all the way back up to that fog wall that we saw. Yeah, we'll definitely try to be human a little bit. So we can have some invaders. Although, having like a non-fun invader like that, who's just way more geared than you are, kind of takes the good aspect of it out. Because I hit him, what, five times before he hit me a single time? He only hit me like three or four times if you count the fire whip that I blocked. So it's kind of like I hit him more. He just knew that he could take it because he took 67 damage a hit. And he was... Oh, I, I, okay. I actually did not know what direction that arrow was going to come from. And so I panicked and got very lucky to not just die right there. But yeah, using a shield is definitely interesting because most people, when they fight with someone, they don't expect them to use a shield. They want it to be like some weird skill matchup or whatever. Oh, okay. Well, I might be dead here because I didn't mean to fall all the way down. Oh, we made it. Okay, we're fine. Yeah, I messed up pretty big right here. But this, you can see the chain is a different direction. And it's breathing. It's a good indication that it is a, a mimic. Uh, excuse me, I can't actually see. We almost got him. Mimics are generally not very strong unless you try and open them. If you try and open them, it's probably at this level just gonna do 100% of your HP so you definitely don't want that Ooh, okay so we got this open which that reminds me the last time I came in here I was playing with one of my friends and we had just talked about this weird mechanic that he had seen in Dark Souls before but I had never seen which is called a vagrant and it's like this weird like crab monster thing that kind of looks like an invader and so that uh that wall broke down and i ran in there to grab that golden ring that i just grabbed and there was just a vagrant there and i was like what the heck i've never seen one of those before and so it's like a little crab monster it's kind of like red and glowy like uh invader and i guess there's two of them that can spawn there's good ones and evil ones I had an evil one because it was it was angry and it, it would have attacked me and those spawn if someone drops like five or more humanity and then loses it somewhere 
So like, imagine you die with five soft humanity and then you die again and lose that blood stain. That would likely spawn a bad vagrant in someone's world. So it gives me humanity when I kill that vagrant. The good vagrants spawn if you drop specific items on the ground and just leave them there. And those, they're kind of like the Titanite lizards, apparently, where they will they will just run away and try and crawl into the ground. And if they crawl into the ground, they've gotten away. But how they work is their loot apparently scales every time they escape from someone. So like, say there's a good vagrant in my world and I let it escape. Then it starts to scale. So that good vagrant will then go to someone else's world and if it gets away again, the item that it's holding will keep upgrading. So yeah, uh, I believe that may work with the evil vagrants as well, like if they kill someone. They're not going to be there again when you respawn, so they'll just acquire more and more humanity. But it's a very interesting thing that I never even knew about the first time I played Dark Souls. Can I open this? Okay, sweet. We could probably find the actual key to do that somewhere in here. So yeah, I do think that the normal key is somewhere in here, but obviously the master key allows us to do things easier. There's honestly no reason not to start with the master key unless it's like your first playthrough because you could just like skip some things on accident without even knowing it. Did I put the boulders back in this direction? Who knows? We need to get back to that area where I fell off. Because... There are things over there that I would like to explore. So sometimes those switches reset, I'm pretty sure. Also, as you can hear, the... The boulders try and move to go the direction that you're in. So that weird noise, like screeching noise, was the boulder uh, mechanism that I was turning earlier, turning to face my direction. I'm not sure why that is. Because it's not like there's someone up there doing it. Unless there is, but it seems very unlikely don't think this is an illusory wall. Yeah. So here's all the sorcerer's stuff again. I think that's the second set of sorcerer's stuff you get. If you count uh, un lower on Deadberg. So here we're here again. What's over here? I don't remember. Oh, this is the elevator. Okay. Man, this place is a maze. Surprised the only time we've died so far was to an invader. I expected to die on that bridge with the lightning man over and over. That was pretty much my first experience with Dark Souls, die over and over to that part. You can see down there, that's something called a Titanite Demon. I think there's four of them down on the ground floor. 
So. Slumbering Dragon Crest Ring. But yeah, there's four of them down there. And they all drop a specific Titanite. I don't actually remember what the Titanite is. I guess this is the safe way to get down there because you can see it kind of like makes a spiral of drop points for you. So this would be the way that you get down there with taking as little damage as possible. I'm not interested in going down there because like only two of the Titanite demons are even really killable for me at this point in the game. The other two are just way too strong. Or at least that's what my friend told me when we were here last time. We did go kill two of them together. Granted, they're even going to be harder as a team. Or, they're going to be harder alone than they are as a team. So yeah, that was Big Hat Logan right there. So we're back here at the bottom. Just going to hope that the boulders don't switch to this direction. Oh, it's now switching directions. As you can hear. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit lost at the moment, so... Give me a sec to figure out what I'm doing. So, we just went that way. There's one more path that I'm missing. There was an item at the very beginning that we saw. And, oh, the way you get that is by going down to the Titanite Demons and then coming back up. So I think we're just not going to grab that item. Where does this go now? Oh, this is the elevator. Okay. So, two paths to get to this room. But we're just trying to get up here now. Because I believe we've done about everything. We got the gold serpent ring. And so, out there is a guy. And we will see him later. Gotta watch for those switches on the ground. Praise the sun. Lots of praising of the sun right there. Okay, so now we're making a little bit of progress again. Apparently, we had some lag when we were going through this with my friends, and these axes became desynced for him, so it was actually physically impossible to make it through there, which is just hilarious. Oh, can we please lock on? Thank you. I think he made it through anyways just by the virtue of he could follow me and that was the real path of the axes. Can you like come back over here? Alright, so we got that dude up there. We'll deal with him first. We need a better shield. Like, we have a decent shield in the Hollow Knight. I would very much like a better one. They sound like rattlesnakes. Jesus. Hey. What up? So the first time when I came to this hallway this guy just did a jumping attack all the way down the hallway apparently that attack does massive damage I just like put up a shield and blocked it so it didn't really hurt me but it took all of my stamina in one hit so that's something to watch out for on that guy he will just leap across the entire room and try and get you I think we've got enough Titanite by now to get our Claymore to plus 10. But 
really we're still trying to work towards that Black Knight Greatsword. Okay. Okay. Ah. Alright, so I don't think hitting him here is going to be an option. So we wait for him to throw. And then, I think we did it. We appear to have done it. Get off the cliff. Assuming, oh, he did die. Okay, this fall was big enough to die. <laughs> Definitely don't go down there. That is not a pit of wonders. That is a pit of despair. Believe you fall all the way to the ground if you jump down that, from here at least. There's probably another area where it's not 100% down. Okay, so we need to make some running happen because those scorch marks are a bad day. Oh. And we are at a bonfire. And we still got time to do all kinds of stuff. Those bombs are loud as hell. We're just gonna kindle this bonfire. Make sure it's easy as pie to beat this area. This is pretty much like a great tip for people who are new to make this as easy as possible. Just kindle every bonfire and you get twice as many S's flasks. And if we had gone to the catacombs, spoiler here, but if you go to the catacombs and kill the first boss, you get that rite of kindling that they were talking about. Rite of Kindling will let you kindle a bonfire again, so you're running around with 15 S's flasks at every bonfire. That pretty much means you can just drink your way through the game. Because whenever you take a hit, you just immediately start drinking S's flasks. But yeah, I think our first order of business is going to be deal with that guy throwing bombs at us. Is someone now shooting arrows at us, but that seems unimportant. Can we? Oh, okay, we need to find that key. I know where that key is, but right now is not the correct time to deal with it. Because it's going to be harder while this guy's throwing giant explosives everywhere. There's a scorch mark right here, so that means he throws a bomb right there as well. So that guy's down. That's the boss right there. You can see him through the window. It's a giant iron golem. Oh, okay. I did not want to get hit by that. Ow. Yeah, these guys get tired after they do their rampaging attack. Yeah, we just want to stay as far away as possible. Because we saw how much damage that did. And then slay this guy. So this guy, you only have to kill him once. And he gives you a Titanite chunk, which is going to help you get past... Um, plus 10 on your weapon. But yeah, with that guy dead, he won't respawn. He's one of those enemies that dies permanently. So you want to take care of him as soon as possible to make exploring this area just simpler. 
right here we got the summon sign of good old Iron Tarkus. The man who can solo this boss. If you're ever having trouble with the Iron Golem, you just become human. Go over there, summon Iron Tarkus. Iron Tarkus will just solo the boss for you. Unless he gets grabbed and thrown off the cliff, which is a possibility, he will solo the boss for you. Ooh, we just barely made that. That was maybe slightly more risky than it should have been. Yeah, now we're going to pick up these items. And what can we still do quickly? We might be tacking on a little bit of time just to clear everything before the boss fight, but we're definitely not going to do the boss fight in this episode. Ooh! So you gotta make that jump. And then there's this guy here. I don't really care what he has to say, unfortunately. So this guy's gonna sell you various Titanites. Oh my gosh. We just got invaded. I kinda want this weapon. So we're gonna buy it. Go along, try and make something you can sell. Uh so that guy's up there, we just saw his health bar, so we we're gonna run down here and grab the shortcut key. And I guess this is going to end with us fighting that invader. We just one shot this guy? Wow. So yeah, there's that cage key. And we saw this guy earlier, that's where the boulders come flying at. Cage key will allow us to open that those cages we saw earlier for the shortcut. Um we'll see if we die to the invader right here. I imagine we won't win. Where is he? He's up there. He's running a scythe build. Oh. Yo, what's poppin'? Get over here. Um, I guess we're just gonna wait for him? I, was, I didn't want to get invaded right now. We're trying to, like, finish up exploring this area. Why you gotta be invading us? Are you coming? What? Get down here. Little pansy. You afraid? He has miracles? Okay. I see how it is. I'm trying to bait out all of his Wrath of the Gods. Get slain! What you know? Why are you healing in front of me? Do you know who I am? I am a mediocre Dark Souls player. You think you can get away with healing in front of me? Alright, so we are tacking on a little bit of time here, but I would like to finish this area as much as possible. So we're going to drop down here. You can make that fall without too much worry. Oh, should probably heal before I just run into this Balder Knight. Oh, wow. I want your sword. 
Which, by the way, that great sword that we just bought, it's pretty like similar. It's an ultra great sword, like the black knight great sword that we wanted to use. But I kind of want to use that one, maybe, because it has lower requirements. So we can get there faster and then go back to level enough health and endurance, which is what I would like and I think will make me the most useful. Flamestone plate ring. So yeah, since we got invaded, we didn't really get to look at that guy's inventory that much, but he has um, other stone plate rings. I think the lightning and the magic stone plate ring as well. Yeah, that guy that we were fighting, I guess he was using the Life Hunt Scythe, which makes you bleed when he hits you, but I'm pretty sure it's fairly weak against shields, which is why I was pretty confident just pulling out a shield on him. And then he was using Wrath of the Gods, which was that little, like, explosion, which is a miracle. He was just trying to push me off the cliff with that, but I knew that if I didn't give him an angle and I just blocked it, it wouldn't push me, so I'd be fine. And then he went for a heal right in front of me. Like, he was still going to be able to take two hits from me. Which is plenty for him to win the fight if he does damage. Which he never hit me, so I don't know if he did damage or not. But yeah, he just healed in front of me, so I just stagger locked him because he had zero poise. But yeah, anyways. I'm surprised we actually beat an invader. We lost to one, beat one. That first guy was just like, there's no way I was going to kill that. That was a giant dad, too much poise, too much health. Too much damage and pyromancies. So he was way too strong. But the second guy, we ended up beating him. So hopefully next time we got a little bit more to explore. So I'm not going to sit at this bonfire. But I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you next time.